Praise be to the living God, uh, beloved. Uh, my name is Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. And I thank God that you have taken the time to join us on our program, Understanding the Father's Heart. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this day, Father God, because this is a day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. There are many today who do not know you from the pardon of their sins. We know according to your word that the end of the age could actually come this day at this moment, Father. So, Lord God, we just ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will bring more into the kingdom. And that, Father, by your spirit, that you will bring those who have walked away from you and now, Father, walk in a backslidden state. Bring them unto you, Father, by your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you will deliver them from the deceptive ways of the devil. And Lord God, bring them unto yourself once again. Father God, we ask that you direct our steps and our words this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And praise be to the living God. Dearly beloved, you already know, and I know, that we are living in difficult times and trying times. Times where there, uh, many times, people don't know what to believe. They're not sure about what they believe. Well, if there is a time to know what you believe, it is now. Because the enemy is out to deceive as many as he possibly can. So you need to know where you stand when it comes down to God's word. You need to know where you stand as a believer. Amen. Glory be to God. I just uh, talked to a friend of mine, uh, and he and he spoke about uh, a person who was possibly about to die. And they called him up and they were very confused about their salvation. They weren't sure about their salvation because they had gotten a report from the doctor that said time was about to end for them. And then they began to get very anxious and wonder if they really knew the Lord or not. Dearly beloved, that is not the time to call upon the Lord. It may be for some people, but what I'm saying to you is it is not the way God intended it to be, that we call upon Him and to make sure that we are saved. We ought to know that we are saved. So when difficult times comes in our lives, are we set right before the possibility of us leaving this earth? We ought to know that our ticket has been punched for heaven. Amen? Glory be to the living God. A believer ought to know this. You ought to know that. You ought to know it in your heart without a shadow of a doubt that the enemy cannot touch your soul. He may touch your flesh, but he cannot touch your soul when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for you on Calvary. And what I want to share with you today is this. Believe not every spirit. Try the spirit. Because I believe when we begin to doubt and when we walk in confusion, it is simply because we have not trusted the right spirit. And when I say the right spirit, the same spirit that Jesus Christ had is the Holy Spirit of God, who is all truth, who knows all truth, and will teach us all truth. That is the Holy Spirit of God. But if you are believing with your own mind uh, and uh, thinking, well, I'm saved because the preacher held my hand and prayed with me, or the preacher told me that I was saved, or I felt saved, well, when troubled times come in your life, you will not feel safe then. 
That's why it's important that you don't allow people to put things in your mind and in your heart that has nothing to do with the Word of God. And sometimes they'll use the Word of God and brings confusion unto you. You know, there are those who come on television, they are of the Muslim faith. And now they're actually using the Word of God and speaking the Word of God. And at the same time, not believing the Word of God. They don't believe that Jesus Christ was a the Son of God. They believe He was a prophet. They believe that He was a good man. But Jesus declared that He was the Son of God. Dearly beloved, we can't have it both ways. Either you believe that he was the Son of God, or you believe that he was a prophet and a good man. Dearly beloved, I believe that he was the Son of God, and that's what, what it will take. Because they also be, don't believe that he, will, he rose from the dead. So you have to watch who you are listening to, who you are allowing to deposit uh, truths and lies in your spirit. You have to be the gateway of your mind. You have to be the one that stand there and say, no, I'm not going to allow that to go into my mind because it will be unfruitful to me. It is up to you to make up your mind that that is not done to you. It will take you being steadfast in the Word of God and making sure that whatever you put in your mind, that you study and you make sure that it comes from the Word of God. And not just because it is popular, or some popular preacher said it, or some Muslim activist said it, or any other uh, denomination that might say something that you know that does not line up with the Word of God. I say to you today, if you receive that kind of teaching in your spirit, you will be confused when it comes time that you meet your Maker. So I'm saying to you today, in the name of Jesus Christ, that everything that is brought forth to you, you must try it. Even myself, I'm sharing with you today. But whatever I'm sharing with you, you need to know that it comes from the Word of God, that it comes from truth, that it is real. Amen? And so we'll be looking at 1 John, uh, the fourth chapter, beginning at the very first verse. And what we are talking about and declaring this day with clarity is that we ought to try every spirit and not believe every spirit. Amen? The Word of God says in the first verse, Beloved, believe not every spirit. First John, uh, John is writing this to the believers, and he's saying to them and sharing with them, believe not every spirit. Let that be the foundation of your thinking. Let that be the foundation of your living. Do not believe every spirit. I believe if we take that as a foundation, then it will allow us to be curious about what is said to us. And we'll get to a place where we are saying to ourselves, I'm not going to believe this until it is qualified. Just like, for instance, when you get uh, something through the mail. Something might say that you want a million dollars. Well, Dearly beloved, you didn't send out for anything for a million dollars, but yet at the same time, you question it because you know that it could be something that will try to, uh, might uh, cause you to spend money to so-called get that million dollars. Dearly beloved, our God, through Jesus Christ, has paid the full price. The full price has been paid. It doesn't cost you not anything in order to believe and to have faith in God. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't cost us nothing physically, mentally, nor spiritually. Simply cost us the fact of believing in God and what He says. That's it. Nothing else. 
So when someone comes to you and say to you, you've got to believe this, you got to believe that, and you've got to add this on to it and add that on to it, dearly beloved, I can say to you right now that that person that is talking to you is coming from a different spirit. And that's why when John, John wrote, he says, Beloved, saints of God, children of God, believe not every spirit but look what he adds but try the spirits try them whether they are of god what does he mean by try them he means that we ought to put what they said to test we ought to put the spirit that was behind it to test do they really care about me when they're really they're sharing with me? Are they really concerned about me? Or are they just trying to get me to join their clan, their denomination? Is that what they're doing? Or do they really care about my soul? Do they really care about building me up? Do they really care about encouraging me in the things of God? Do, are they really doing that? Or do, are they really more concerned about adding to their count number for their denomination or their organization? Dearly beloved, you need to find out. You need to know about it. You need to be serious about this matter. Because there will be a time that when you're challenged in your life, that when it comes to a place where you may be at the end of your life, that you will be questioning if you are saved or if you're not. Just like I said about that individual whom it was declared upon them that they only had uh, not much time to live. And now they were concerned about their salvation. You need to know if your salvation is real. Because if your salvation is real, you can walk in the boldness and the confidence that God has supplied for you. Because you not only expect to be with the Lord one day, you are walking with Him even right now by His Holy and Divine Spirit. So we must what? We must not believe every spirit. And secondly, we must try the spirits to see whether they are of God. So that lets you and I know that there are spirits in this earth that is not from God. There are spirits in this earth that has come to do damage to your soul and to your life. There are spirits who desire to see you lost. There are spirits that desire to see you tossed into the bottomless pit with Satan and his demons and the Antichrist and the beast. There are spirits, dearly beloved, that has an agenda of destruction. And they will use other people in order to get you to follow ways that are contrary to the Word of God. And so that's why you have to try every spirit, because look what, look what he goes on and add now. Look what he goes on and add. Because, get this, because many, not some, but many false prophets are going out into the world. There are many false prophets out into the world today. Many of them, dearly beloved that are out there today, that carry nothing but to destroy you, to destroy your mind, to destroy your soul, to take you to eternal damnation. Dearly beloved, they are out there today. And many times they are knocking on your door on Saturday mornings. That's why, dearly beloved, you must know what the Word of God says and not go on your own understanding. Look what um, in Matthew, the 24th chapter, uh, beginning at the fourth verse says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, or beware, that no man deceive you. Did he say a devil was going to deceive you? No. He said, Beware, take heed, 
and let no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There will be many that will come and say that Jesus is the Christ. There will be many that will come and say that they are the Christ. There are many that will say that I've got the saving knowledge for you. But dearly beloved, what you have to understand, if they are void of the truth, they don't know that they've been deceived themselves. And the only way for you to know that is by simply knowing the word of God for yourself. Amen? Knowing the word of God for yourself. For many false prophets are going out into the world to do the work of Satan. And as I said, many of them don't even realize that they're false prophets. They believe in what they're saying. If they knew what their end would be, they would change their lives and the teachings that they're sharing. But because they do not end, they do not know the end. They believe the end is going to be a glorious end. They don't know that they've been deceived by the devil himself. They don't realize that. But so you have to realize that. You have to acknowledge that. And just because they're giving you a little truth, dearly beloved, what is a little truth when it's mixed with lies also? It's like taking a glass of water. And say, well, I'm going to drink the water. I know that they put arsenic in it, but I'm just going to drink the part where there's no arsenic in it. Would you be willing to take that chance? Would you be willing to put your life on the line? Taking a chance that way? No, you wouldn't. You would discard it completely. And that's what I'm saying to you today about those who are walking contrary to the word of the living God. They're not going to tell you, I've got a lie that I'm sharing with you. Why would they tell that to you when they believe that they have the truth? So that's why they're adamant in what they're sharing with you. That's why they continue to come if they come on Saturday mornings or other days of the week. That's why they continue to knock on your door because they want to indoctrinate you. They want to change you and your belief and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as I said about the Muslims, they want to change you. They, want, they will share with you the word of God, but at the same time, Within them, as the Bible says, they are like ravenous wolves. They want you to become as they are. Because they don't have the whole truth and they are not born again. So in these days and times, you and I are called to try every spirit. Look at the second verse of 1 John, the fourth chapter. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that says the Son of God came to the earth in the flesh and died is a spirit come from God. That's the identification of it. That's a perfect example. And John is letting you and I know that every spirit, if it is of God, then ultimately is going to make this confession that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. The Son of God came in the flesh. Amen? So you ask that to your to your uh, uh, teachers and your friends or your preacher or your pastor, whoever it might be, you ask them this question. Do you really believe that Jesus Christ did come in the flesh and is of God? Dearly beloved, that is a test that you put on them. And I want to say to you today that many of them will not stand with that whatsoever. But if they're walking in the truth, they will say yes, and then they will begin to speak truth. But you have to be cautious and be the guardian of your own mind 
and what you allow to be put in you. Don't just go on, on, on television or on radio or on the internet and just listen to preach after preach after preacher. It may seem like the right thing to do, but many times it is not. You need to rather know whom you're listening to. You ought to know what their character is. And as the Word of God says, the, that, that, that you should judge them by their fruits. If a preacher is just talking about money, I can promise you he doesn't care about your soul. If that's all he's speaking to you about, how the Lord can bless you, how the Lord can do this for you and do that for you, he does not surely care about your soul. You have to decipher that. You have to realize that. What he cares about is your carnal, your carnal desires and your carnal uh, gratifications and his own. But he does not care about your soul. Jesus said, learn of me. I am meek and I am lowly. If your preacher telling you to learn of Jesus, to be meek, to be lowly? Are you telling you to get your way? Or is he telling you, don't let anybody do anything to you. Stand on your own. Be bold. Be confident. But really, you're doing it in your own strength rather than relying upon the Lord. And when we rely upon the Lord, that simply means that we are putting ourselves in a position where we are vulnerable to this world. But God is with us and he will deliver us just as he did the children of Israel. Just as he did the three Hebrew boys. Just as he did David. As he did Daniel. As he did Elijah. As he did Moses and the children of God that stood before the Red Sea. He will deliver us because he is our God. But we ought to put faith in him and him alone. Look what the third verse says. And every spirit that confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Amen? It is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Dearly beloved, the spirit of the Antichrist is already in this world. Even though it speak of Christ, it's still anti-Christ. Because it's not necessarily the words that they're speaking, but actually what is in their heart. That's why the Word of God says that they will come to deceive you, but their heart within them will be as ravenous wolves. They will come as doves. They will come as one who is meek and mild, but within their heart. They are as ravenous wolves, caring not about your soul. And so, dearly beloved, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? So what ought to be a preacher's focus? Your soul. Not what you can get. Not what you can gain. That's promised to you anyway. Once you become a believer, that is all yours because God now is your father. So we ought not be grabbing after all these things because those things are already promised to us because we are children of God. We are his children. So that is our bread. Amen? Dearly beloved, let us not go after the things of this world and believe that somehow it will bring us peace, it will bring us joy, no, it will not. And whatever we gain, it will only last for a season. We need to have our focus on the Lord and our God. Because there is a spirit of Antichrist that is in the world right now. And it wants to destroy your soul. Are you going to give it to him? Are you going to allow him to do it? Look at the fourth verse. You are of God. Talking about believers. Little children. 
and have overcome them. Overcome who? The demonic spirits. The evil spirit. We have overcome them. He's not just talking about the world, but we have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, the greater spirit lives inside of you because you're a born-again believer. And dearly beloved, because you are a born-again believer, you need not be deceived by Satan or the spirit of Antichrist that is in this world that many will bring to you in these last days. Dearly beloved, I'm saying to you today, trust the Lord with everything that is within you. Amen. Praise be to God. And dearly beloved, if you desire to communicate with us, you can at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Again, that's Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Dearly beloved, check out our Facebook page at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown and uh, on our YouTube uh, station where we have over 600 videos, many of them short videos that last between three and seven minutes uh, at the most, many of them. And you can um, log in there and glory be to God uh, and become a subscriber. And, and I want you to know that some of them are some power-packed videos because we've been getting many reports of what God is doing by His Holy and Divine Spirit. And dearly beloved, we pray that the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember our programs on Sunday morning uh, from the hours of 6 and 10 a.m. at www.927kzjm.org or on the radio at 92.7 where we are sharing God's holy and divine word. Dearly beloved, our Lord is great. Our God is great. And remember, it is not simply the word that you know, but that which you understand that will ultimately give you the victory in this life. Be blessed till we be again.